So there's a couple of things to consider before even loading your roll onto the Acuity. One of them is where was that roll stored? Make sure that all your rolls are stored in the same room as the Acuity itself. If it's come from a cold warehouse, then you're probably going to experience some issues with rippling or cockling as that roll adjusts to its new temperature. Another very important factor is, is your roll wound squarely onto the core? If it's not, and there's some sort of telescoping effect going on over here, it's all uneven, and you can be guaranteed that as that material is tracking through on the platen, you're going to see some form of dot misplacement banding. Another consideration is, is your core round or oval? This is also very important. If the core is oval, then you have irregular tension as the material is feeding through. This will also induce some form of dot misplacement banding. As that roll is over, it's going to stop being feeding with tension, then no tension as, as it gets to its longest point. Another very important factor to consider is how you load the physical roll onto the flange. First of all, make sure that your left hand flange is in the correct position so you don't experience a media detect error. Get that flange in the correct position first, tighten up the thumb screw, then with this flange make sure that you squeeze the roll together. Doing so just ensures that that roll is not having this effect on the actual physical flange which can also induce some form of dot misplacement banding. In some rare cases there's been reports of this shaft being loose. Um, naturally if that shaft is loose then we're also going to have some irregular feeding happening on the actual roll feed mechanism. So just make sure that these two M6 bolts on either side of the shaft, there's one here and one over here, are tight. Um, before tightening them though, just make sure you pull back on the actual physical bar or forward on the physical bar just so that the bar is parallel to the actual physical print pattern and then tighten up those two M6 bolts. Another thing to check before loading your material is make sure that your platen is clean and free of any ink. If you have any ink build up on there, you're going to generate some sort of resistance on one side or the other. Um, so clean the ink off and I sometimes tend to use something like furniture polish which actually gives the platinum a nice, smooth, slippery surface once again. So any sort of resistance will also have an effect on the actual physical way the material is fed through the printer itself. And if you do have a buildup of ink, then you're most likely going to see some um, dot misplacement where that ink has built up. I can appreciate the drop it's landing in a different position because of that buildup of that ink and where the material is dome-shaped. And you'll have a what we call piping appearing down the physical um, length of the media itself. Almost the same effect as that of rippling. When loading your material, just make sure that your two media retainers are out the way because when you do feed the material through, you're most likely going to jam the material into them or possibly even damage them or bend them out of shape. So it's the usual method of feeding through one edge first, pushing the material through, And then grabbing it from the other side. You have two options when loading the QD LV 1600. One of them is the easier of the two methods. Simply pull your material through. I like to pull it all the way down to the roll take up. Go around the back of the machine and on the physical flange itself, over here, not on the roll, on the flange, start winding the material back. Right. I'll demonstrate that now off camera you'll see the material start winding back. If you're on the, on the actual physical material, you're most likely going to pull that material off out of shape. So don't do that. Always hold on the flange itself and wind it back. Using that method, winding the material back on the flange itself, just ensures that the roll stabilizes on the platen and maintains its natural shape. Because if you've been pulling it skew like this, there's a good demonstration of 
the effect, it's exaggerated, but it's a good example of how the material could have been loaded on the machine. So by simply pulling it down to the, the roll take up, we go off camera once again, wind it back. You're simply ensuring that that roll is now pulled back nice and straight. It's nice and square on the, on the actual physical roll of the back. And also the, the roll is now under slight tension before you actually physically clamp on. An alternative method of loading your roll is to use the roll stopper arm. This is the more difficult of the two methods. Um, or I wouldn't say difficult, it's more complicated of the two methods. So what you want to do is push your roll stopper arm all the way to the back with this pin push it out, release the roll stopper arm, pull your material through gently until that roll stopper arm actually prevents the material from rolling forward anymore. Make note I'm pulling it from the middle of the material, don't pull from one side, always pull from the middle. Push the roll stopper arm back, that releases the pin and then very gently this one did it automatically, but that arm came forward. If it doesn't come forward, very gently pull that arm forward and you'll notice that the material actually winds back a bit. Before clamping on, just make sure that your right pinch roller and your left pinch roller are both over the material. If one of the pinch rollers is half on, half off the pinch roller, rather try and adjust the material that they are either on or off the pinch roller itself. Once the meter is clamped, put your meter retainers over the material. When you hit three, when you hit three, you get into the work. I prefer putting the media retainers over the material once the material is clamped because you always stand a chance of disturbing the material if you do it beforehand when it's unclamped. Doing so will then also probably result in poor print results if that material is moved. So clamp on first, put the media retainers on and then you can drop your window and do your measure detect. The same principles apply in the roll taker. So if your core has got a lot of tape on it, as demonstrated on this core, peel the tape off. Especially have a big buildup of tape. So having a buildup of tape like this will not naturally also create more tension over here and your material is most likely going to begin to stop telescoping all over the place. So remove any other tape that's on the core. If the core is damaged, I tend to rather use a nice fresh core. Um, also make sure that the core is also not oval because once again, if it's oval and it's taking out, it's going to be doing that. Right, great tension, not great tension. The whole time it's taking out. I also like to make sure that the actual core, once again, as on the roll feet, is squeezed onto the actual physical um, flanges. So, now you can see that's going to take up nice and square. So I'm just overemphasizing that any time you have uneven tension on either of the cores, front or back, you're going to have, or you may possibly experience some form of dot misplacement back. Another important factor is make sure that your clutch is set to the second yellow notch not completely all the way in so make sure that you have your clutch set to the second yellow notch because having on that tension setting is pretty much good for almost all materials that you're running if you're printing long two and a half meter three meter drops continuously and the accuracy at least 1600 i encourage you not to try and take roll onto the actual physical take up roller mid -trip. This just will disrupt the actual physical feeding characteristic of the machine. What up?
would do rather is have an astroid edge because having an astroid edge will also allow you to connect the tape to the actual core correctly. If it's all over the place and or maybe even perhaps cut a little bit skew, you have problems with tension, too much tension on this side and not enough tension on that side. So what I will do is demonstrate um, a media cut by advancing the machine forward a little bit, pushing the function button which brings up the cutting function, enter, and this will give me a nice straight edge to attach to the core. I can also now advance the material down to the take-up. Check the material for positioning. In this case, it's correct. Naturally, if it was too far over to the right, then I'd be wider of the flange. We don't want that. We want it to be on the core. So I turn the take up off. Because we've got a nice straight edge now, it's much, much easier to attach it to the core. Like I said, if it was skew, you'd have a lot of tension here, not a lot of tension there because of the nature of the way it's been cut. Try and get this in the middle of the material first. I'm going to turn the take up on because I'm in the advanced function. Basically, I'm changing the origin of the machine. The take up is turning, so now I've got this natural tension on the physical roll. I can then prepare an additional two pieces of tape apply on this corner. I don't want to go and pull too hard on this corner because then you can see I'm putting stress into the roll. So if I release some of that stress, I get a nice even tension across the roll. Which will be demonstrated once I attach this piece. And as you can see, I've got nice even tension across the width of the material. So I'm just going to demonstrate what will happen if I put too much tension on one side, which is generally the culprit of any sort of standing, and is that is if you attach the roll like that. So now because I've attached it incorrectly, this material is most likely going to start telescoping. So this is a critical point of the loading procedure of the QTM 1602. Once you're satisfied that you have the material on the core, you can click the enter button. And just to confirm that you've taped to the core correctly, you can advance the material one revolution to confirm how well it's taking up. And as you can see in this picture, it's exactly spot on. If you saw any type of deviation, i.e. if the material was too far to the right or too far to the left, or you saw the material was not taking up directly on top of itself, you're pretty much guaranteed that you can have some form of telescoping, which again will induce some form of docking space being banded. Once you're satisfied with that, push the enter button, because that will be the starting point for your print. Final step before producing a job is to do a feed comp. The reason why we're doing this is because we're on a take up, so your feed comp can be slightly different due to the tension on the take up rod itself. So I think it's quite an important step because this will identify whether your roll is loaded correctly or incorrectly. When the printer is produced, it will show you whether the actual bars are completely parallel with each other. If they're not, and you have a dark line on that side and a white line on this side, it generally means that your roll is loaded incorrectly. Um, so like I say, the bars should be completely parallel to each other and what we're looking for is a 
slightly dark line where the two bars overlap. I prefer a slight overlap rather than a white line because your eye identifies the white line more than a dark line. If you are, or if you've noticed that you do have that dark line, white line situation, it's best practice to rather reload your roll because not doing so will definitely produce issues with telescoping as well as dot misplacement band. And finally it's worth demonstrating the effects poor loading has on the Acuity LED 1600. One can clearly see that we have this dot misplacement where the actual physical color changes so we've gone from a blue to almost to like a magenta tone um, and that's purely because the droplet is landing in the, in, in the incorrect position due to poor loading of the material. Um, it's quite dramatic and this being on a matte vinyl which is generally very very forgiving but clearly you can see the effects that it has on the overall print results.